I've got a little uh, mesquite hoof here that I painted green and I'm gonna do a little hoof mapping video and um, show what a one week trim looks like on our pony here. Um, so first I painted this, this is a physiologically correct, correct hoof or my idea of a physiologically correct hoof. Uh, carved out of mesquite wood, it's a, hard, a native hardwood. And I painted it red, and then I painted it again green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim down to the, the red and expose the, the, the and show the pattern of, of basically my trim pattern. Okay, so I'm gonna map the foot first, just to get another hoof mapping uh, example in. Or, um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a line at the, at the middle of the, of the central sulcus and another, another dot, I should say, at the tip of the frog. And that should be the true tip of the frog and, and on the horse, and we'll show you that on pony. And then I'm gonna put a line straight down the middle of that. That divides the foot in half, and then you can see from that point, if you put a dot at the, I've just taken the rasp parallel to this, from that point, if you put a dot at the, uh, apex of the quarter, this curve over here, that'll be the widest part of the foot. If you put a dot at the apex of this quarter, it'll be the widest part of the foot. Um, just so happens that this is the same width on both sides. That's not always the case on a horse, but that's something you can, you don't have to make that happen, but you can see how close that is. The next thing I'm gonna do is um, join these two points. Okay, that um, gives you the widest part of the foot. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, a mark at the back of each, at the end of each collateral groove where the heels end and that's the widest part of the frog. I'm gonna make a line right there. Okay, so uh, the next place I'm gonna go is the seat of corn on both sides. I'm gonna make a line there. That's also the, the, the seed of corn uh, is also the inside of the heel purchase. And then the next one I'm gonna make is I'm gonna find the, the peripheral edge of the sole, the lamina, and the true tip of frog. I'm gonna go halfway between those two and make another line there. That gives you roughly the toe pillars and the tip of the frog. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and outline the peripheral edge of the sole down into the bars. Oops. Okay, and then I'm gonna, now I've got my toe pillars and the, and the heel, uh, the base of the heel pillars, the heel contact points, toe contact points. From that point, I'll join those. And then, connect the diagonals in this case perfect foot um, you know idea of a perfect foot uh, you're not gonna see that on every horse especially the start but this crosshair of the diagonal uh, uh, lands almost in the same spot as the crosshair of the, the perpendicular lines um, that just shows perfect balance. That, that, that you can assess where the foot is drifting by where those lines uh, intersect, again, opposing each other. So anyway, um, the last thing I'll do is I'm gonna just draw in where the coffin bone is. when you're done this should be in the center these two lines should be concentric That'll, that says your coffin bones in the center of the foot so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna expose I'm gonna sew how I would uh, trim this foot respecting these pillars and the peripheral edge of the sole so I always start in the back and in the center of the central sulcus I'll go as far as I can to the to the tip of the frog to the forward on the frog 
until I barely make some scratch marks at the tip of the toe. And then follow the peripheral edge of the sole to establish a live frog surface. Right there, that's the red. Okay, that's where I stop. As soon as your rasp will stop working when you hit the live stuff. It's just soft, like it's like rubber. Okay, then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. All the way back, taking off just the dead stuff. I just basically like a little pedicure. That'll give you a line from the tip of the frog, you see. This I'll come in and take out with a knife if, ne if needed, but it's just I'm just trying to get that to be uh, off the ground, not touching the ground. So no dead stuff squishing against the ground and making them uncomfortable. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow the peripheral edge of the sole, outside the peripheral edge of the sole, outside of the lamina. And that's the first line of uh, the first uh, bevel. where I just take the wall, bevel the wall to the peripheral edge of the sole. Okay. On a, on a real foot, you'll see me on pony, I'm gonna come up like this and take this. This has already been done on this foot. So when I'm done, that's the pattern. The last thing I do is I come in and take the edge down off the inside of the heel. And this is what I would do on a, probably on a, weekly basis. Uh, this would be a weekly trim um, simulating natural wear. And that's a foot that would just be covering terrain and, and articulating and getting all of those surfaces. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that same thing over to Pony. He, and Stephanie, if you wanna bring him up here in the, sh in the shade right here. And that's why you can come on this side. And this is Pony. He's our 14-year-old. Uh, Welsh. His name is Mischief. I call him Pony. <laughs> Mischief managed for Mercy for sure. Okay, and one more step, Mister. Up there. Okay. So he, I've been trimming him for uh, what has it been? Ten years. Uh, he was four when we got him, and uh, I trim him on a on a one to say four week uh, trim schedule. So I'll go ahead and map his foot first. Pony. This little elbow is right in the way. There's the midline. There's the widest part. Widest part. bar should end there you'll see the bar should end at the widest part you'll see this one's ends right at it's overgrown a little bit but the base of it ends right at the widest part this one's a little bit forward and this heel shifts down a tiny bit so that's the kind of thing you can assess with this the next thing I'm gonna do is the widest part of the frog then the heel seat of corn and then the toe pillars are gonna be right Hang on, Mr. Pony. I'm gonna give him his foot back a minute. And then I'll go ahead and outline the, the lamina. And there's the real bar and the overgrown bars out here. So, but that's where the, the origin of the bar is. So. Okay, then once I have that, I've got contact point here, 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 and here. Hang on, pony. Okay, they both intersect the midline, and this one's slightly forward of that. So 
It's a balanced foot. Um, and then I'll go ahead and do the same trim. Here's the little edge I was that I didn't do on the mesquite foot. It's just this little, that, but that's see it's falling out on its own. So it's just he's already trying to exfoliate that. I'm just gonna get some loose flaps off, and then I'll do that same pattern on this foot. You always want to take care that when you're looking here, you're not taking a big gouge out here. So always be aware of your whole raft. And then a little bit here. This part right here is real important on this frog to get that off the ground because they won't use their heel, even if you have a really nice heel built, if that frog isn't comfortable. So this isn't necessary, but I can trim this to, to make the trim last a little longer. It's not necessary at this point because they're not making the bars aren't making contact you can see so but just in case i don't get out here for another couple weeks i don't want them to hit the ground and cause pressure so oh last thing i'll do is here's his here's p3 right in the center of that foot okay Boy phone.